Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the program. We're coming up to our final hour, and it's time for our signature segment. We haven't had it for a while. Glad yes. to have it back. Book talk. Yes. Yes, today we have here, um, I, I'm very excited actually to speak with this person. He's a chef. His name is Chef Degan Septo Aji in the studio to talk about his book, Behind the Chef. This is basically a biography of his life uh, during his career in the culinary world for 40 years. Yes, 40 years, because I think the first time he uh, went into the career of culinary was and when he was 15, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So here it is, uh, Chef Degan Sabta Aji. Good morning, Chef Degan. Good morning, Marisa. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm Welcome good, thank show. you. Good morning, Paul. My goodness, Chef. Uh, uh, to be honest, I was just given your book this morning, yeah. but I managed to read because I read pretty quickly. Your journey is just amazing. Yeah. I mean, like 40 years of a culinary a career and you started at 15. Tell us about the beginning of your career. Yeah, it was actually a very, um, uh, very normal when, you're new, mm. when you grew up in Europe, right? You right. have to think of your uh, future. Mm. So in the school, they tell you, so what do you want to become mm. when you grow up, right? Mm. So um, I wanted to always to do something that is, uh, that I can do all over the world. Right, right. right. Uh, I was not smart enough to become a pilot. I was not smart <laughs> enough to become a doctor, so right? And then I wanted to do something that I could do all over the world. Then I've seen in a in a TV show or, or uh, you know, in, in, in the US, you have this uh, dream boat and this cruise ship stories. Yes, right? yes, the yes. Series, right? Yes. And I seen something like that. I see the chefs cooking there and I thought, that is cool. That's what I want to do. Right. I want to cook in places and then, and when I see my mom cooking, it's easy. It's just, uh, you know, stirring things in a yeah. pot. And, uh, but it's not like that, you know. The no. real life is not like that. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, and that's uh, where I, when I was 15. Mm. You were in I, Germany, right? I was in Germany. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Germany. Germany. Yeah. And then when I was 15, I wanted to do an internship mm -hmm. during my uh, summer holidays. <laughs> and I, I asked to, uh, to go in a hotel and, and do my uh, a training program, right? right? And the chef at that time told me already, don't do it. Why? Don't do oh, it. Why? Because, because the culinary world is not nice because you work over times all the time. Right. You work odd hours when your friends are off, you have to work, right? Is it true that it's also very loud and angry? It is like very Gordon loud at that time, in those times. <laughs> really? It was very loud, it was very, um, yeah, when you see Gordon Ramsay yes. getting steamed up, that was a day-to-day -day life. <laughs> when, really? when I, when it's I was not, in the it's not glamour and no, pleasant. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, not glamorous and pleasant. Wow. No, it's not, it's not. But it actually started beyond 15, because I remember your love of cooking. I, I read a, a passage. Yeah. It started from when you were even smaller. Yes. You actually like cooking, and even at that time, how old were you at that I time? Was, I was in the second grade, elementary second grade. school. And it was because yeah. I was forced to, because my, my right. parents both, uh, my stepfather and my mom, they had to work, right? Mm -hmm. And in Europe, it's normal that uh, when you're in that age, even in elementary school, mm -hmm. you're alone at home until yes. they come back from work, right? Right. So you're forced to... At that time, there was no food, daycare. I mean, there is no... No, 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 no way. There's alone. no daycare. Right. So I had to basically... First was warming up the food that my mom cooked, right? Right. And then she taught me how to make a fried egg, you know, the simple things. Yes. Because we're Indonesian, we always had rice mm. uh, on the table, right? Mm. So then you just add uh, the, the other ingredients that you needed. So yeah. sometimes it was warming up, sometimes you did a fried egg. Yeah. And yeah, and, and uh, you're basically forced to be independent yes. as a kid. And right? at that time you were how old? I was uh, seven. You were seven, seven at that yeah. time. And your mom was actually quite worried. It's like, oh, you know, a man should not be in the kitchen. Was that true? Um, yeah, in the beginning it was like that, but then, uh, but then, uh, it's it's all the way you make it. It's all the way yeah. uh, how you how you uh, be serious in your work, right? Yes. And uh, because she was also working at that time, uh, she she worked as a stewardess before. Yes. And she was in the hotel, mm. and she was familiar with uh, kitchen and the all F &B this, right? Kind of the F and B uh, backgrounds, and, and and she knew okay if. if if you really want to do that job, you should do it, and you should. You can then also go abroad, right? Yes. If you if you do it right. Yes. So yes. was it through this internship that you discovered this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Uh, uh, not the internship, not but on my apprenticeship. So, okay. I when I worked. Azubi. Azubi. Exactly. <laughs> I got here. Azubi. 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 Exactly. Uh, apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, that's what happened basically. Um, First, in the beginning, I did two internships in two different places and very different at that time. Yeah. And um, 
both offered me a job because right. I'm so used to working at home when you're a kid, you, you, you have chores oh you have goodness. to do, right? Right. And, wow. and they, they both offered me a job. And then I said, okay, I think about it. And then I asked my mom and she said, uh, which one was more difficult? Oh. I said, oh, the first place was very difficult. We had to do everything ourselves. Right. That's where you go. That's the one you're going to take. Wow. That's where you go. Because uh, once you can manage the, the difficult stuff, you will easily manage the easy stuff. Right? Your mom's so wise. <laughs> Character building. So what are the highlights of this book? This yes. is basically a biography. This tells a story about your life until now as a chef, yeah. 40 years of career. So what are the highlights? It's actually what, what I'm trying to, to convey in this book is um, the real... Um, the real scene in a culinary world, right? Mm. Uh, sometimes we see a lot uh, what's happening because of social media and because of TV of shows. TV shows, and and yes, it is great. You cook things. A chef is creative, right? But uh, but there are a lot of other factors involved, right? There's a lot of hard work behind it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of drama behind it, right? Ooh, such as uh, some family dramas or or Seriously. others uh, work dramas, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like any other workplace. Like any other workplace. <laughs> like any other workplace, right? Yeah. But uh, the odd hours that you have, and then as when you say odd hours, yeah, it's like, like how many some, hours? Yeah, you have? in at my time it was normal that you work 15, 16 hours, right? Per wow. day. Per day, yeah. And, and but, you didn't get burnt out. No, it was not like that. I mean, uh, it was just the way it was, right? <sighs> and when you're younger, okay, you can take it. And, yeah. and uh, we had a lot of other motivation, seeing great chefs uh, mm. and what they do. And, and we want to, we were striving to that. We want to be like these guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, yeah, and then um, it was, um, it was also another thing the things that you create as a chef mm. and then getting compliments mm. for it. That is actually what makes me stay in that business. Because, you know, after all the hard work, you make something and then you get compliments from guests or from your chef, right? And oh man, I did something nice. What was I the best compliment? Something. And what did you create at that time that you remember <coughs> until now that keeps you going? Until um, that was the first compliment I got from my chef, actually. Right. Um, I, I, he, I was w watching him making a salad, right? And then when I tried it, I, for me, it was just too sour, you know? Right. But then I tried to, if this is what he likes, maybe I have to do it this way, right? Yes. So I made it one day, he asked for, and my chef is very smart at the time. He always orders it through the waitress, but they, he never said that it's from him. Oh. So she never ah. said it. So we never knew for, for who we were cooking right, for, right? right? So, and then he came to the kitchen, you know, go into the kitchen and was like screaming, who made the salad? And everybody's scared. And, and, <laughs> and no, everybody quiet, you know? <laughs> And I was like, I did it. I did. I said, Very good. Ooh. Guys, this is how you make a salad. You know? <laughs> that was my first and I wow. guess best compliment. It comes also from your mentor, you know? Right. That's yes. something that, yes. that it now, sticks. You know? Yes, <laughs> of course. For, for this particular biography, you actually chose Akmal Nasari Basral to mm. write it. Exactly. Was there any particular reason why? Yeah. Chose yeah actually, he's a novelist, right? He's a novelist yeah. and uh, he's a good novelist. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, he is also a, a friend of my wife. But they went to the same campus. He's a senior and she is a fan of his books. Mm. And um, it, it came that uh, at that time we were on, on holidays in, in Germany and she was reading some of his books. And then there was a place that, uh, that was told in the book that was pretty much close where I live. Right. right? right. And then I, I, I read what he described and it's exactly how it is over there. You mean right? where you lived back then when you were a child? Frag yes, Frankenfeld yes, yes, yes. or...? No, no, no. It was a, uh, it was a town near Frankenfeld, right, basically, right? right. Uh, and, then we are, and then we went there, you know? We went there and then he described everything and the resources he had in that book was, right. was great. So we made a picture together right. with the book, with right. his book, oh. and we sent it to him, right? So he was uh, very... <laughs> pleased about it so and sweet. we came together as friends and we, we talked and then he said to me uh, I told about my where I worked and, uh, and then he said hey talk more let's do a book this is interesting. Oh, it was his idea it was uh, uh, it was both uh, ideas both I mean, yeah. because you know my idea was actually as a chef you sometimes want to make a recipe book right yes. every yes. chef wants to make a yes. book right yeah this is different this is a biography it is different right and then and then I was thinking there's so many books, and I have many books in, in, at home, right? Yeah. In my, in my uh, office, basically. And um, I was thinking, these days, if you make a book, uh, who, 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 who's 
spying who's reading those books. I'm reading the book. <laughs> no, no, no not, not this book, recipe but, book. but the recipe book. Right. Oh, recipe because recipes book, yes. you can get in internet, right? Sure. Yeah, you can get true. on YouTube. Even in TikTok, you get that's you get true. a lot of recipes, that's true, right? Chef. Good point. And then mm. you, you you think, uh, maybe in my time you needed to have books. Maybe now if you search for recipes, for for example, for us, Soto Ayam, there are yeah. hundreds of recipes yes. that you can yeah. find in all different ways, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then I thought, and then when he said, uh, we should write something about it, it's just really entertaining. Yeah. You went to many places, very interesting, and, and I like to listen to you, you know? Listen. Yeah, okay, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and then, but it was like forward, backwards, you know, we talked yeah, a lot, sure. and then he talked to my mom, and he talked to a lot of uh, people, and then, yeah. and I was really surprised when he came uh, with the, uh, with the first draft, right? We had to yeah. read and then, oh my God, I never knew, but he explains the, the plane where, it, where yeah. my father yes. you know, passed away, right? yes. the plane, and into the detail, what type yes. of, plane. I never knew about these things, you yes. know? I mean, I, yes, he, he, my dad passed away, but I yeah. never knew the detail of the plane. It went, oh wow. Yeah, so it's almost like learning also about yourself yes. again. Exactly. Remembering. Exactly. exactly. You had to read, of course, the whole thing, right? What was your yeah. impression when you finished it? I bet a lot of feelings <clears throat> were inside you when yeah. you were reading it. It stirred up a lot of things that mm. you put aside, basically. You know, I, I, there's a lot yeah. of, uh, uh, like there's a part in it where, um, maybe you've read it, where I met, um, I met a friend uh, in a kitchen, in a fine dining restaurant. We worked together. Mm -hmm. And then it turned out that his dad was actually the man who was searching my, my, for my dad when my dad passed away. Oh. You know, my dad uh, had a, a plane accident yes. and they were missing for a couple oh, of days. Wow. And his dad was the man in charge wow. of searching. All world. Uh, that, that, is, that is crazy, you know, yeah. when you think that yeah. I grew up in Germany and he grew up in Surabaya, two different places, and we met in one kitchen wow. and all of a sudden this comes out, you know? Really? And that, that came out after a year we worked together. Not, not right away, you know? Seriously? Yeah, it was like uh, preparing vegetables, you know? And then we're talking, hey, where's your dad? Where, where's your dad now? Yeah. Oh, my dad passed away. And where's your? Oh, my dad also died on, on, on cancer and so on. Right? And then yeah. like, what happened to your dad? Well, he passed away on a, on a plane, a plane accident. When? Long time ago, I said. Mm. When? Mm. In the 70s. Police plane? I said, huh, how do you know? And then it turned out that he had all the materials. What? You know, uh, oh, where that's they why found, he had so many found, details on it. Yeah, all he had all the materials and the, the pictures when they found my dad, kept so by his amazing. father in his room. My and he goodness. wanted to throw it away a, day, a, a, a year before and wasn't allowed by, by his mom. He said, no, don't throw it away. Maybe you, there will be somebody who. It's unreal. Yeah. It's That's unreal. Very trippy. <laughs> yeah. So you get to know your the history of yeah. what happened yeah. to your exactly. dad as I well. Exactly. I saw the pictures, and oh at that goodness. time, you know, at that time, uh, in my family, nobody were allowed to see the bodies after mm -hmm. they found it. Yes. Only two of the family members, the the male two fa male family members, were allowed mm -hmm. to see it, right? right. And I was uh, I was small. I didn't know all these things, right? Yeah. And then I saw the pictures, and then I brought it to my uncle who who yes. were allowed to see it yes. and show them pictures. Yes, these that are the pictures. That was it. Mm. Oh my goodness. Your journey is amazing because <sighs> you were born in Indonesia and yes. then when you were six you moved to Germany yes. because your mother was there married to a German. And then uh, you also managed to travel uh, as, as a chef. Yes, yes. But you come back again to Indonesia, yeah. and at that time, even your mother was slightly against it, saying, exactly. "Why? Exactly. Why would you want to go back? Your salary would be one tenth of what you're receiving <laughs> here true, in yeah. Europe." Yeah, it's true. So tell us, tell us. I mean, after all of your ventures, you know, yeah. to all these European countries, and then suddenly, settle back Indonesia. Here. Yes, I, I uh, basically when you look in the '80s. Um, when you compared Asia with with Europe um, on on a on, on the gastronomic scene, right? Mm. Uh, Asia is, uh, is very uh, big, and uh, you have a lot of five star hotels at those times. We and do. in a five star mm. hotel in Asia, at that time I was working in Jakarta, mm. even the hotel itself has like five, six, seven outlets, right? Mm. Japanese, Chinese, Indonesian food, Italian. So you have yeah. all. When you're in Europe, you don't find these things in one place. You mm. have to go to many different places. And competition is very high when right. you apply to different places. Right. right. So um, I, I remember I, I, was, um, I was on a holiday. Uh, my cousin got married. We went to Indonesia. And then we went to 
the at that time the Jakarta Hilton, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was there and I see all these different outlets and wow, this is five star and all this. And I was still young. I was in the beginning of my apprenticeship, you know, and I was like, oh, I want to work there one day. This is crazy, <laughs> you know, because you don't find this in other. Yeah. And that where I decided I need to go back, you know. And then um, I was at that time, I was in London after my apprenticeship mm -hmm. for the language. And I, I was sitting in the, in the, watching a movie and then not far away, there were Indonesians, a, a bunch of Indonesian uh, young kids sitting there and they were talking to each other. And I listened and I listened. And that sounds familiar, you know? Right. And I said, I want to go back. And then I said to my mom, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go, um, I want to explore my country. Yes. I want to explore the cuisine. Mm -hmm. I want to learn other things. And if possible, learn other cuisine yeah. nearby, you know, right. not going to many different places. But, and that's why I went back. Yeah. And then from there, and then I, I work in many different countries as well. So. Right. So what would be your trademark cuisine? Because this is actually related to my other question that I asked earlier off air. Is like, do you feel more Indonesian, more German, more European? Yeah. I mean, it's like, and how would that influence yeah. your trademark cuisine? Um, that's a good question, actually. Um, I uh, because. There was a time where, where I forgot my, my, my mother tongue, Indonesian, yes. right? So, but you learn it back, but uh, by heart, you're still Indonesian because yes. it's the tradition. It's, uh, how, you know, how we get together as family and all this. Yes. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't go away. Right. You're still Indonesian. And, and look at me, Indonesian. Fully right? Indonesian. Fully Indonesian, <laughs> Japanese, right? Uh, and then um, it was, um, but when people talk or when I work, yes. a lot of my friends, German man, you know? <laughs> I mean, the way you work. And, yeah. and, and when I meet my friends in Germany, I yeah. speak the German language and I yeah. speak the slang where we grow up, right? The right. dialect where we grew yeah. up. Even your English has a slight German, German yes. Exactly, exactly. You know what exactly. reminds me of Paha Bibi? Yeah. Bibi, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. So I, 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 ha I have that and, and uh, without knowing, you do things like, I do things like a German does, right? Yes. But, uh, from outside, also everybody says you're Indonesian, but you're not Indonesian. You know? <laughs> so that's who I, who am I? So, so from a cuisine point of view, yeah. I love Indonesian food because mm. that's what I grew up with. My mom is a very good cook, right? Mm. She cooks no a lot of very in, in, uh, traditional, authentic Indonesian dishes. Yeah. I was uh, trained French and German, yeah. right? And then uh, I went back to Indonesia. I learned also Indonesian cuisine because I believe as a chef. As an Indonesian chef, you have to know how to cook Indonesian food, yes. right? It's very important yes. when people ask you abroad, right? Yes. And then, um, and then I, I was uh, quite a while in Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, seven years, and yeah. I learned the Thai cuisine as well, and I, I wow. find that cuisine really exciting. And um, what do I like to do? Everything, everything, everything that is good, you know? Yeah. Simple, good food, great ingredients. You can do a lot of things when you know different cuisines, you can combine them together, yeah. that it makes sense, yes. you know? And um, yeah, I think um, you're a difficult to say. It's know? difficult to say. I'm a global kid, maybe. <laughs> yes, you, you are a global kid <laughs> who <laughs> loves good food, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we are all <laughs> citizens <laughs> of the world. Yes. Like, yes. Now the world is open, you know? Absolutely. We're all citizens Absolutely. of the world. Absolutely, yeah. And we need to, uh, to integrate with other cultures as well. I agree. Because so we can work together and, and have a great life too. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Well, Very thank you so much, Chef De Gens, Chef Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. This is a great book. I, I've managed to read several chapters pretty quickly since this morning. Uh, but what I love about this book is that this will give you an insight as well, especially for those of you young people who want to go into the culinary world. You will see, you will understand his journey and, you know, so that it can prep you if you really, really, you're really, really serious about going into the culinary world. Thank you so much, Chef Degas. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to take another short break. A quick reminder for you to follow our social media accounts at C Today News if you haven't already. We're on Instagram, X, and YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more after this.